Hello everyone, I am Meenu Agarwal and today I will be discussing the topic Enzyme Assays. What are Enzyme Assays? Enzyme Assays are laboratory method for measuring enzymatic activity. Enzyme activity, it is a measure of the ability of a given enzyme to convert its substrate into its products. Depending on the enzyme, it is typically assayed by measuring either the amount of substrate that is disappearing or the amount of product that is appearing over a specified period of time, such that the final result is expressed in terms of moles of conversion per unit mass of protein per unit time. Types of enzyme assays All enzyme assays measure either the conception of substrate or production of product over time. A large number of different methods of measuring the concentration of substrate and product exist and many enzymes they can be assayed in several different ways. Now biochemists they usually study enzyme catalyzed reaction using four type of experiments. They are initial rate experiments, progress curve experiments, transient kinetic experiments and relaxation experiments. Initial rate experiments. When an enzyme is mixed with a large excess of the substrate, the enzyme substrate intermediate builds up in a fast initial transient. And the reaction, it achieves a steady state kinetics in which enzyme substrate intermediate remain approximately constant over time and the reaction rate changes relatively slowly. Now rates, they are measured for a short period after the attainment of a quasi steady state. Typically it can be done by monitoring the accumulation of product with time. Now because the measurements are carried out for a very short period and because of the large excess of the substrate that is present, the approximation free substrate is approx equal to the initial substrate can be made. This initial rate experiment is the simplest to perform and analyze, being relatively free from complications such as back reaction and enzyme degradation. It is therefore one of the most commonly used type of experiment in enzyme kinetics. Progress curve experiment. In these experiments, the kinetic parameters they are determined from expressions for the species concentration as a function of time. The concentration of the substrate or product it is recorded in time after the initial fast transient and for a sufficiently long period to allow the reaction so that it can approach equilibrium. These experiments are less common as of now but earlier they were widely used in the early period of enzyme kinetics. Transient kinetics experiments. In these experiments, the reaction behavior it is tracked during the initial fast transient as the intermediate reaches the steady state kinetics period. These experiments they are more difficult to perform than the two that I have discussed above because they require rapid mixing and observation techniques. Relaxation experiments. In these experiments, an equilibrium mixture of enzyme, substrate and product, it is perturbed, uh, for instance, by a temperature, pressure or pH jump and the return to the equilibrium, it is monitored. The analysis of these experiments, it requires consideration of the fully reversible reaction. Now, what are the features of a good enzyme assay? It should be simple and specific. It should be rapid, sensitive, easy to use and economical. Now, talking about continuous and discontinuous assays. Enzyme assay, they can be split into two groups according to their sampling method. Continuous assays other assays that gives a continuous reading of activity and discontinuous assay where samples are taken the reaction is stopped and then the concentration of substrate or products that is determined
Now talking about continuous assays. Continuous assay, they are most convenient with one assay giving the rate of reaction with no further work uh, required. Now there are many different type of continuous assays. They are spectrophotometric, fluorometric, calorimetric, chemiluminescent, light scattering and microscope thermophoresis. Talking about the first one, that is spectrophotometric. The spectrophotometric assay, it is one of the most common method of detection in enzyme assays. The assay uses a spectrophotometer that is used to measure the amount of light a substance absorbs to combine kinetic measurement and Beer Lambert's law by calculating the appearance of product or disappearance of substrate concentration. This spectrophotometric assay, it is simple, non-destructive, selective and sensitive. UV light is often used since the common coenzymes NADH and NADPH absorb UV light in their reduced form but do not in their oxidized form. An oxidoreductase using NADH as a substrate could therefore be assayed by following the decrease in UV absorbance at a wavelength of 340 nanometer as it consumes the coenzyme. These are the spectroscopic techniques that are used. Now talking about fluorometric. Fluorescence is when. Now talking about calorimetric assays. Calorimetry it is the measurement of the heat released or absorbed by chemical reactions. These assays are very general since many reactions involve some change in heat and with the use of microcalorimeter, not much enzyme or substrate is required. These assays, they can be used to measure reaction that are impossible to assay in any other way. Next is chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence is the emission of light by a chemical reaction. Some enzyme reactions produce light and this can be measured to detect product formation. These type of assay, they can be extremely sensitive since the light produced, it can be captured by photographic film over days or weeks but can be hard to quantify because not all the light released by a reaction will be detected. Static light scattering measures the product of weight average molar mass and concentration of macromolecules in solution. When given a total concentration of one or more species over the measurement time, the scattering signal is a direct measure of the weight average molar mass of the solution, which will vary as complex will form or they will dissociate. Now talking about microscale thermophoresis. Microscale thermophoresis, it measures the size, charge and hydration entropy of molecules in real time. The thermophoretic movement of a fluorescently labeled substrate changes significantly as it is modified by an enzyme. Now this enzymatic activity, it can be measured with high time resolution in real time. Discontinuous assays are when samples are taken from an enzyme reaction at intervals and the amount of product, uh, production or substrate consumption is measured in these samples. So that is discontinuous assays. There are two types, radiometric and chromatographic. Now talking about radiometric assays. These assays measure the incorporation of radioactivity into substrate or its release from substrates. Since radioactive isotopes, they can allow the specific labeling of a single atom of a substrate. These assays are both extremely sensitive and specific. They are frequently used in biochemistry and are often the only way of measuring a specific reaction in crude extract. Chromatographic Chromatographic assays measure product formation by separating the reaction mixture into its component by chromatography and this is usually done by high performance liquid chromatography but can also use the simpler technique of thin layer chromatography.
Although this approach can need a lot of material, its sensitivity can be increased by labeling the substrate or product with a radioactive or fluorescent tag. Now talking about factors to control an enzyme assays. First is salt concentration. Most enzymes, they cannot tolerate extremely high salt concentrations. The ions interfere with the weak ionic bond of proteins. Effect of temperature. All enzymes work within a range of temperature that is specific to the organism. Increase in temperature generally leads to increase in reaction rate. There is a limit to the increase because higher temperature, they, they can lead to a sharp decrease in reaction rate. This is because of the denaturing of protein structure resulting from the breakdown of the weak ionic and hydrogen bonding that stabilize the three-dimensional structure of the enzyme active site. Third one is effect of pH. Most enzymes, they are sensitive to pH and have specific ranges of activity. All have an optimum pH. The pH can stop enzyme activity by denaturing the three-dimensional shape of the enzyme by breaking ionic and hydrogen bonds. Next is substrate saturation. Increasing the substrate concentration increases the rate of reaction. However, enzyme saturation limits reaction rate. An enzyme is saturated when the active sites of all the molecules are occupied most of the time. At the saturation point, the reaction will not speed up no matter how much additional substrate is added. Now the last one, macromolecular crowding. The phenomena of macromolecular crowding alters the property of molecules in a solution when high concentrations of macromolecules such as proteins are present. Crowding occurs since these high concentration of macromolecule reduce the volume of solvent available for other molecules in the solution which has the result of increasing the effective concentrations. That's all for today. If you find this lecture useful then please let me know. Thank you.